Hello, Rambo here with a Room of Judgment guide for Dead Ops Arcade 2. I can assure you that this will be the most complete guide that you'll see anywhere on the internet. So, what will you learn from this video? I will be telling you how to get any upgrade you want on either solo or co-op, and will explain all the perks you gain with each of the four upgrades. Timestamps for each upgrade and other parts of this video will be in the description down below, and there are also accurate closed captions in English for the hard of hearing. Now before we begin, there are a couple of key concepts that I think we should briefly review, which a lot of players are not too familiar with. So let's talk about the skull upgrade system in this game. By collecting skulls, you of course make your weapon stronger and also make it shoot faster. You can level it up to either a red skull or a purple skull meter. Now, a lot of players probably don't know that these skulls also make the player slightly faster. Admittedly, it's difficult to quantify just how much faster it makes you since none of this information is public knowledge. But based on some tests that I ran, it seems as if having a red skull meter gives you a 5% increase in speed, while having a purple skull meter gives you a 10% increase in speed. Again, these numbers may be a bit off, but there is a noticeable difference in speed when you have skull power. This speed increase that the skulls grant you is a key component of a couple of the upgrades that I'll be speaking about in this video, so keep this information in mind. And one more disclaimer, on your screen right now, the column on the right side displays the names of the upgrades that I'll be speaking about in this video, and these names over here in the middle column are the names of the fates that I will mention in passing. I also made a DOA2 Room of Fate guide which shows you how to get any fate that you want. Link for that video will be in the description. So, the DOA1 fate names in this left column will not be used in this video. So if I say Fortune, I'm talking about the DOA2 fate. If I say Fortitude, I'm talking about the DOA2 upgrade. This could be a little confusing since one of the DOA1 fates is both of these names put together, but like I said, we'll be disregarding anything DOA1 related in this video and focusing primarily on the upgrades. So before you get to the Room of Judgment, you first need to beat the 8 before Fate Challenge on Round 37. After this, you will enter a boss fight of sorts with the Stone Guardian called the Test of a Nobleman. On Solo, you will always be awarded an upgrade for your Fate, no matter which stone you choose. Fortune becomes Fortitude, Power of Destruction becomes Fury, Eternal Companionship becomes Favor, and Swift Like the Wind becomes Force. On Co-op, only one player can upgrade in this first Room of Judgment. The upgrade will be awarded to whoever inflicts the most damage to the Stone Guardian boss. There's supposedly a second component to it as well that you might have heard about, called Karma Points. That's when you stand over a teammate and revive them. Now, from many tests conducted by players throughout the years, it has been concluded that the weight given to Karma Points in determining the upgrade is, perhaps unintentionally, negligible. So I wouldn't even be concerned about Karma Points. Just focus on doing the most damage to the Stone Guardian, and you should get the upgrade on co-op without issue. So if you're playing with friends, make sure you all agreed upon who's going to get the upgrade, and allow that player to shoot the Stone Guardian until it has about half of its health bar left. And then the player's teammates could shift their attention from shooting the zombies on the map, to now help and shoot the Stone Guardian and defeat it. If you have the Eternal Companionship or Power of Destruction Fates, you will do a lot more damage to the Stone Guardian since those are Fates with powerful primary weapons. Whereas if you have the Swift Like the Wind or Fortune Fates, it's probably going to take a while for you to inflict a lot of damage to the Stone Guardian. So I recommend using nukes and, if you're lucky, try carrying a Purple Skull weapon into the boss battle. When you finally enter the Room of Judgment, the player who did the most damage should pick their stone last, so that the other players on the team are allowed to pick stones of their own, which will award them trinkets, which will give the player stuff like gems, skulls, and a free life. Now you might be wondering, is it possible for other players to eventually upgrade as well? The answer is yes, but the catch is you need to make it to the second and final Room of Judgment after round 101. This second Room of Judgment allows all remaining players in the game to receive an upgrade, regardless of how much damage they did to the Stone Guardian. If you already have an upgrade, or if you're playing solo, you will not be able to double upgrade on this round. The game will only give you trinkets since you already have an upgrade. So enough about that, let's now examine all the abilities that each upgrade offers you. We'll start with the Fortitude. The biggest thing that the Fortitude upgrade does is it makes it to where weapons, skull power meter, and most item pickups last 1.75 times longer than the normal duration. For example, the normal duration for the Raps vehicle is 40 seconds, but with the Fortitude, it'll last 70 seconds. This is very helpful, though it doesn't apply to every item in the game. A couple of the item pickups like the Vortex and Umbrella will not last any longer than usual with this upgrade. Another key attribute of this upgrade is that it allows you to earn a maximum of 10 lives, 10 nukes, 10 speed boosts, and a 10 times score multiplier, rather than being capped off at 9. The upgrade also gives you a temporary magnet at the start of every round. Now, the rest of the abilities that the upgrade gives you are things carried over from the Fortune Fate, such as starting at a 2 times score multiplier every time you take a death, and also having a 50 second revive timer, rather than the normal 60 second timer. It's also worth noting that you run at normal speed with this upgrade, which makes it the slowest of all the upgrades. So, in summary, most item pickups last 1.75 times longer than normal, you can earn up to 10 of each HUD item, you have a temporary magnet at the start of every round, and like the Fortune Fate, you start at a 2 times score multiplier when you die, and also have a 50 second revive timer. Now onto the Fury. You 
you actually have a chance of getting an early glimpse of this upgrade when defeating the Ren's Rally Silverback Challenge after round 11. Though for some reason it's called a Night Fury here, which may or may not be a reference to how to train a dragon. Anyways, the Fury grants you a powerful death machine which literally obliterates the zombies, if you have your graphic content option enabled. Though having an old score pop up after each kill gets old real quick. The gun is both stronger and shoots faster than the traditional Purple Skull death machine, though the Fury is also classified as a Purple Skull weapon, which gives you about a 10% increase in your player's speed when you have the Fury death machine equipped as your primary. This may not seem like much, but it is very helpful when you get into some of the later rounds where the zombies become much faster as well. If you have zero nukes at the end of a round, this upgrade gives you one nuke at the start of the next round. Seems random, but it's a thing. And like the Power of Destruction Fate, when you pick up any gun on the map, it starts as a Red Skull weapon, which can be pretty helpful. So, in summary, the Fury grants you a strong death machine, it gives you one nuke at the start of a round if you have zero at the end of the previous round, you're able to run about 10% faster than the default speed with your Fury death machine equipped, and all guns that are picked up start as Red Skull weapons. Next up we have Favor, which is probably the most complex upgrade to describe. Just like the Eternal Companionship Fate, your primary weapon is a Purple Skull LMG, and you are followed by a small silver chicken which imitates your primary weapon. The favor upgrade also adds another chicken to the mix which accompanies you in your journey. With the passage of time, this golden chicken cycles through four different purple skull weapons, the LMG, Death Machine, Shotgun, and Rocket Launcher, in that specific order. This cycle is time-based, and the duration that your Golden Chicken has each of these four weapons varies in length. Typically, you'll have each weapon anywhere from about 3 to 5 minutes apiece, and you can actually speed up the progression of the weapon cycle by picking up chickens on the map. And on the other hand, your cycle can be slowed down by dying. At the end of the cycle, your Golden Chicken temporarily departs you, and enters a ceremonial dance that lasts about 10 seconds, and then it hatches anywhere from 2 to 6 chicken eggs, with at least one of those eggs guaranteed to be golden. In case you don't know, there are two types of chicken eggs in this game. There are white chicken eggs, which contain random content such as a nuke, a speed boost, a chicken, some gems and skulls, and in rare cases, even an extra life. The golden chicken egg, however, always gives you an extra life, making it very valuable. Once the golden chicken lays the eggs on the map, 30 seconds must pass before they hatch, and the zombies will start attacking the eggs during this time, and they also have the ability to destroy the eggs if enough damage is done. The white eggs are pretty vulnerable to being destroyed if not protected closely, though the golden eggs have three times the health of the white eggs, so as long as they're not getting roughed up too badly by the zombies, the golden eggs should hatch just fine. It is possible to get a maximum of 6 golden eggs, though getting more than 4 golden eggs is unlikely. There's a weird bug with this upgrade when you pick up certain weapons, like the grenade launcher. It'll actually cause your golden chicken to shoot at the same speed as your primary weapon. For example, if your golden chicken is in the rocket launcher phase of its cycle, it will shoot the rockets at a really slow rate if you have a grenade launcher or ray gun equipped as your primary. You of course have the ability to drop that primary weapon, and all returns to normal. So there are a couple of things that carry over from the Eternal Companionship Fate. All chickens that you pick up on the map last two times longer than the normal duration, and since the favor is a purple skull upgrade, you benefit from a 10% increase in player speed just like the Fury upgrade. So, in summary, with the Favor upgrade, your primary weapon is a Purple Skull LMG, and you're accompanied by two chickens. One chicken is the Golden Chicken, which grows in size as it cycles through four different Purple Skull weapons. The LMG, Death Machine, Shotgun, and Rocket Launcher. At the end of this time-based cycle, it hatches anywhere from 2 to 6 chicken eggs, with at least one egg being guaranteed to be golden. You can speed up the cycle by grabbing chickens, you can slow it down by taking a death. Like the Eternal Companionship Fate, Favor makes it to where chickens last 2 times longer than usual, and Favor also increases your player's speed by about 10%. Finally, the Force Upgrade. It just dawned on me a few days ago that the name of this upgrade is probably a reference to Star Wars. Anyways, with this upgrade, your speed boosts get replenished to a total of 4, that is, if you had fewer than 4 speed boosts at the end of the previous round. So, if you have 5 or more speed boosts, you're not going to get any additional boosts. But if you have 3 speed boosts or less at the end of a round, you're going to get bumped up to 4 the following round. With the force, every time you use a speed boost, you leave behind the blue fire trail, which has a similar effect to the flamethrower, as it slows down any zombies that run by it and eventually kill some of them too. However, this fire trail only lasts for 10 seconds. The ability that carries over from the Swift Like the Wind fate is that you get a 50% increase in player speed, which makes it an optimal fate for solo. However, if you're playing co-op, I would not recommend upgrading to the Force during the round 37 Room of Judgment. It's a great fate, but the upgrade doesn't offer much more to make it worth upgrading during that first Room of Judgment. So, in summary, the Force replenishes your speed boost to 4, and this only applies if you have fewer than 4 speed boosts. Also, every time you use a speed boost, you leave behind a brief, blue fire trail which slows down enemies who pass by it. And finally, just like the Swift Like the Wind Fate, you will run roughly 50% faster than normal speed. That about wraps up the video. As mentioned earlier, I've made a Room of Fate guide which should be on your screen right now if you want to check it out. If you have any additional questions regarding the Room of Judgment or Stone Guardian strategies, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.